Hey everyone, welcome back to block party number 91. And we're in the uh, segment on SRM, solar radiation management. And Jim just gave us a good recap. Wish we had recorded that, but let's just go ahead and recap the recap. Um, the bottom line, the, the two main points that I got from what Jim said about how do we get marine cloud brightening to happen, which is the most promising solution for cooling the planet in time from any standpoint that you want to take, whether from economics, from negative impacts, there are essentially zero negative impacts to marine cloud brightening. Um, and Jim mentioned two things. One is putting a vessel out in the San Francisco Bay or beyond to generate the clouds and thus generate attention um, to, to, uh, to marine cloud brightening. Um, and the other is to get a, you know, some wealthy individual to take the lead in funding it. Um, in terms of getting one vessel out, um, out there in, you know, Northern California to demonstrate it, you know, the single biggest cost of the whole project is getting vessel number one developed, prototyped, built, tested, and operational. Once we have that one, it's like, you know, pardon the analogy, it's like having a rabbit. Have one rabbit and the next thing you know, you're gonna have a bunch of rabbits, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, once we have that first vessel, we'll be able to make copies of it. Um, so, you know, how do we get the substantial funding required, hundreds of millions of dollars to get vessel number one? Uh, from there to get to a thousand vessels would be just a few billion dollars more on top of that. And a thousand vessels is roughly what we need to cool the planet in time. Um, in terms of getting a wealthy individual to fund it, um, uh, to some degree, it's a little bit of a contradiction in terms because wealthy individuals are wealthy because they like to hoard and they like to invest in things that make them more money. And we have indeed explored just in conversation ways that we could essentially turn marine cloud brightening into a business that then charges fees of governments and you know, uh, property owners, you name it, um, even industries, et cetera, uh, to um, pay that firm, that company, that enterprise for cooling the planet. Um, and we've explored that, we've gotten some pushback to that idea, but the bottom line is that we need to find a mechanism for getting this done. We need a strategy for getting this done. And um, I'm hearing ideas, but I'm not hearing a strategy, okay? I propose a specific strategy and here it, and here it is. And Michael, I see you got your hand up. The, the strategy I propose is that we first build an exponentially growing collective intelligence through an initial focus on feeding everyone plant-based foods, because that's something that everyone understands and everyone can get behind. And then as we build that out, as we build out the collective intelligence community into the millions of people, um, long before we get to millions, even when we're at thousands or tens of thousands, we'll have enough of a critical mass that we can get some portion of those focused on solar radiation management and through the application of collective intelligence, we can come up with all the solutions and all the steps to turn you know, an, a big picture strategy into a detailed plan that we can then execute on. So that's both my recap of the recap and my immediate thoughts and love to hear everyone's thoughts. Michael, you had your hand up, go for it. Yeah, thank you. Um, my thought had just escaped me, sorry. Please continue. Oh yeah, um, I thought that we might have a working meeting on Wednesday, and we might, in our working meeting we might make the project of building this one ship on Trove on Catalyst Trove as a project. We're building this one ship. People, you know that is our 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 event or our project that we're building or something. Use Trove to build out our collective intelligence factually. With regard to our net, our networking, hey, I'm an engineer over here. I can do this. You know, the Trove is so good at doing that. 
I would recommend we start the project. How about that? That sounds that sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. So again, that's th those are good ideas. And let's build out the strategy, right? Phase one, phase two, phase three, high level strategy. So what I'm proposing is phase one, make the focus on food, right? Um, even at COP26, we struggled to get people engaged in a meaningful conversation about marine cloud brightening. And COP26, I mean, that is the burning man of climate. You know, if you, what greater concentration of people focused on cooling the planet, uh, but COP, and even at COP, and there we were very publicly singing, dancing, getting all kinds of attention, but very little engagement, right? And so um, what that tells me is we need to, we need to, get people where they're already engaged and interested in, right? And that's what leads me to food, grow our community exponentially centered around food. And then as we grow, we expand the topic space. Uh, Marco, did you have your hand up? Okay, sorry about that, no problem. Um, James had a video that he's put in there, or, uh, but, but first Jim has, a, has something to say. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, the, let's not forget the, the business model of the of the um, those links I sent you, which is um, um, a carbon reward policy, because if you can come up with a, a carbon dioxide equivalent of uh, of marine cloud brightening, it looks like it would be fully supported, and so the business model of doing marine cloud brightening would be just really really attractive. Um, that the actual creation of the clouds will have a, uh, a cooling effect, which is, which is, would be paid for by new currency. So it could be just a, a new global business, you know, like the um, electric vehicle business or the solar panel business or, or something like that. Um, it would take understanding that this market will exist because otherwise, I don't know how you can make a business case for, for cooling the planet unless you're paid for it. So um, if we did find somebody who, who saw that vision and then looked at all the technologies and say, well, the biggest bang for the buck, the way I'm gonna make the most money is to do marine cloud brightening. Let's make a prototype, get some measurements so we would know how effective it is and see it. And, uh, um, and you, it could be done in a demonstration project where um, there could be currency flows um, but um, ultimately, when the policy is in place to support it, it's like I said, if we don't have a policy like this, we can't make it. And uh, um, uh, it could it could make sense to somebody um, just from the most basic thing. It's like, if, OK, so if this policy was in place, how will I make the most of this currency? And if marine cloud brightening comes on top of the list, you know, there's going to be a prototype, you know, next week. You know, um, that's that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I'd say that's I'd say that's all very reasonable, very logical. And now, see that for me is getting closer to an overall strategy. Now, in terms of the business model of uh, paying people to do things which are either reduction of carbon or reduction of carbon equivalent, which is what marine cloud brightening is. What is, what, what is the part of the strategy that addresses that, that says, look, here's where the money's gonna come from and here's how we can get this, this policy and these you know, government funds, I presume government funds um, to materialize in support of that policy. Love to hear your thoughts on that, Jim. Yeah, the, um, it sounds like government funds, but it's not because it's a, it's a, a new type of currency. Um, it'd be represented by a, a central bank digital currency, but it's not it's not valued in dollars, and it doesn't appear on any fiscal budget. So essentially, it's not government funds. Um, the it's a it's a permanent marketplace with a price signal. So the price signal is in tons, the a, a ton of mitigated carbon. So, and the the permanent market is you would have 
you could you would have a contract with a an, an exchange authority to get the to receive the funds <clears throat> so <clears throat> if you had a, a 30 year contract to provide cooling uh, services you would get that payment and it equivalency of a of a, a mitigated uh, tons of carbon so it's really just a, a business you know proposal um, it does a lot of other things too there's a, a social equity aspect to it and ecological restoration aspect but um, when it comes to uh, being effective effective is measured in tons um, then you you look at see what's the most efficient meaning how how little money you have to pay to get those tons because you've got to put the money up front um, so um, this would be a great thing to be talking over a a vegan dinner in a beautiful place uh, uh, that everybody's invited to, like you said, that that model. Um, I'm just saying that um, um, to get the um, the marine cloud brightening uh, considered as a viable business, I I don't see uh, another way. So it's uh, it would mean educating people on the the policy, and uh, um, you know. Well, it doesn't have to be everybody. Like I said, if you get <clears throat> gets a, a corporation or a wealthy individual who sees the the writing on the wall, which is we've got to do something about this climate, uh, analyzes the most efficient way, meaning spending the least least amount of money, looking at what's what's most effective for the planet, which would be, um, you know, how much how quickly you could cool it. Um, if marine cloud brightening comes to the top, like I said, that's that's motion. That's that's going to be bringing uh, resources into that into that uh, um, that idea and that activity. Yeah, thanks. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, when you talk about a central bank and a digital currency, um, I'm it, it brings me to that great book that you recommended to to us. Uh, over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, which I, I read cover to cover, the big book, uh, Ministry for the Future. And because they had a central bank backed digital currency, et cetera, et cetera, for, for carbon removal, basically. Um, in, in our case, um, in, the, you know, in the case of the real world in 2022, um, do you see any movement in the direction of central banks or digital currency moving in that direction uh jim yeah it was a there was a meeting at, at cop uh called uh, beyond Bretton woods which um in you know in economics that was when um the the global economy was reorganized around the, the u.s dollars reserve currency uh, and gold back you know, a gold-backed currency. That's what that's what they came up with. Um, yeah, I know it's being discussed by central banks uh, around the world. Um, the Ministry for the Future. That book's still getting uh, a, a lot of it, attention, and it seems to be um, maybe it's snowballing, but it's so early to tell. But I always say exponential changes. They're hard to see in the beginning. You know, something that could really really move and take over things, you, you, you just don't see it unless you're really looking for it um, because um, it's it's small, it starts small first. Um, I still think it's a practical proposal. And, and like I said, it would take it would take a, uh, a business or, or a wealthy individual to have the vision. OK, this looks like it's happening, um, meaning the the uh, carbon policy. Uh, what's the most um, uh, effective thing for the planet what's the most efficient thing for my dollars you know so i don't know we you know like i said early um but um i i'm hoping that it's just relentless because there i don't see another <clears throat> another solution you know that we we have to collectively pay for the insurance policy to prevent the destruction of the planet so <clears throat> The idea behind the global carbon reward is it's done with a, a multiplicity of central banks that represent a, a, a large part of the world economy, and um, they back it. They don't have to pay for it, but they back it. So in worst case, 
we're going to give you um, a, a floor price. And that floor price you can take to the bank, the, the, you know, literally. So that floor price is your guarantee. And if you've got a contract to say uh, provide marine cloud brightening, um, and let's say it's for the Arctic, you know, and it's got an equivalency of so many millions of tons and the current price for a ton is such and such, you get that many millions of those tons of, uh, uh, for, for cooling the planet. And it's over time too. So you, you gotta be, you know, the marine cloud brightening is an active thing. It might be powerful and needed, but it, you don't put it in place and it's still there a hundred years later. You know, you gotta do it daily. Um, so, you know, I hope that's, uh, that's, that's, you know, clear, but um, um, it does take a lot of dialogue and a lot of information and it's not easy to digest. I, I sent the links to the wiki pages. It has a warning on the top that it's, you know, it's, it's a bit, you have to know a bit about e economics to know even what they're talking about. And uh, I think that was good about the novel because uh, it got that out there. And uh, I know that the novel has been um, licensed for, uh, for, for movie rights by a big, a big house. And I'm hoping that happens because um, just like Don't Look Up, it's getting a, a lot of attention. I think a, a, um, a positive um, outcome to the climate catastrophe um, is the name of that. I mean, that's what that book does. It's like, it avoids the worst of the sixth mass extinction. That was the, the goal. And, uh, and in the book, he lays out all the possibilities with the carbon currency being uh, the, uh, the activity of the ministry for the future, which is there to protect the future. So thanks. Good stuff, Jim. You know, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the complexity of this, that it's a lot of information to digest. And so I would offer this thought that a necessary precursor to getting that to happen, a central bank backed digital currency, et cetera, et cetera, a carbon equivalent, et cetera, to even get marine, to, to get that to happen, period, even without marine cloud brightening is gonna be quite a feat. And then to get marine cloud brightening to be on the, you know, the, the approved sanctioned list of possible solutions is another huge, you know, leap with a lot of complexity. So for me, the necessary precursor for all of that is collective intelligence, which you sort of alluded to obliquely, um, but I think that needs to be brought to the, to the forefront is collective intelligence. And in one hour, we start our collective intelligence uh, segment. Um, so we'll, you know, talk more about that then. But, um, you know, when you say, you know, I don't see it any other way than that. Um, I think collective intelligence itself, that necessary precursor would find other ways, not to say that you're, there's anything particularly wrong necessarily with what you've uh, outlined. Um, Although, uh, you know, the case can be made that if we make it money driven, it will become corrupted and, you know, um, exploited and, um, you know, driven by misinformation uh, created so that certain individuals get very wealthy on this and nobody else makes money, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, there's a, definitely a dark side to money. Um, but anyway, really good, really good stuff. Um, I noticed James put, uh, uh, James Desmond put a video in the chat. Um, James, anything you want to comment on that? You, uh, should we, is, should we maybe take a break and watch, take a break from discussion and watch a little of that? And if so, how much, and where do we jump in, et cetera? James Desmond. If you um, yeah. Um, I tell you, no, I put in the link because I think it, it's not something we can all watch here now anyway because the video is too long and uh, I does another link I must attach to it there now because it's a, a follow-on video that the, the, the group did with another couple of, another person involved in the talk. But basically, um, as we're talking about strategy for, you know, marine cloud brightening and that, and 
I, 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 as we talked last, discussed last night, I think the going with food is a great strategy for gathering momentum for the collective intelligence because nobody had, can argue with the idea of giving people food for free. Like, I mean, who can argue with that? Like, so that is a great way of gathering momentum for the collective intelligence in itself. And I agree with that 100%. But when we're on the talk of, or the conversation of SRM and how urgent that situation is, I feel given what's, you know, even what's transpired in that conversation, oh, that I'm going to share with you there as well. Um, you know, the conversation that's that's been had in, in, this com- in this link is something that we all need to hear and ask ourselves some queer, serious questions about. And I, by all, I mean everyone fucking on the planet needs to hear this conversation, basically, like, and they need to ask themselves some serious questions about it. And some of those serious questions involve what we're discussing here. And I believe that unless some something happens drastically to alter people's way of thinking, just like that film, don't, you know, don't look up what they were saying, point is, unless something like that drastically happens to alter people's thinking as to the predicament we're in, we're not going to get the support we need for the SRM or have the time to build a collective intelligence in order to prevent what's coming down the road. So for the idea of getting SRM or Marine Cloud Brightening on the go, I think that the only way you can get it going in time is to have mass public push for it. And they're not going to get that mass public push without getting the true information, you know, from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So I'll play just about five minutes of the last, uh, near the end of the conversation and I'll leave the links for you to watch them in your own time. But just want to play this particular five minutes because it's in regards to what we're discussing, Marine Cloud Brightening or SRM, even Mirror Reflection has been mentioned in this link. Um, but it's just so that, you know, we need to know what we're up against so we can ask ourselves some serious questions and, and, and time frame. So I'll just play it there and, uh, and then we'll, I'll finish up then when I stop it after a couple of minutes I just say a little bit on the strategy that I'm coming up with about it so. yeah go for it go for it James thank you Um, you you mostly uh, underline the importance of acceptance and being being here and now, and people are still wondering whether is there anything that we can do for the environment. Do you see any possibility of any kind of geoengineering? You already mentioned mere reflection. Uh, may, maybe uh, to me it looks like a good idea. But unfortunately, we cannot take the eyes attention to make such an effort for some reason. So maybe it will not be large scale enough. Maybe it will not be on time. But, but do you see any other way that people are all wondering whether we can do something or not? I think, I think you need to turn the question around. Uh, I've, I think that within all... Um, within all frameworks of logic there isn't a snowball's chance in hell that there will be a human being left on this planet in 20 years zero we may have months left we may have years left we don't have decades that's you know now now i'm not saying something weird can happen the smartest person i know believes in ufos they're just out beyond pluto they're going to come in and they got this vacuum cleaner and they're going to sort this shit Okay, fair enough. Maybe some weird kind of age of Aquarius mental thing is going to happen. We're all going to find ourselves living in a dog's ear. I don't know. Okay. But I have a different way of looking at this issue. And it is to say, given that we can do nothing about our impending mortality, we can do nothing about it. Therefore, everything is left to do. This is an extraordinary time. What do you want to do? Who do you want to talk to? Who do you want to be? And that's that's different. Wow, what do I want to do? Like I said, I spent two years looking at things I should have been looking at for the previous 50. You know, trying to figure, wow, who is this fucked up 
kid from this weird Catholic backwater. You know, I, 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 like, no, I'm not saying that's useful, but it, well, when people say, say oh, oh, I mean, I've come up with about four geoengineering projects of my own, all of which I thought were great as well. Yeah, whatever. Now, look, but I, so, something might happen. That's cool. If something, yeah, I, I, I'll roll. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm spending a hell of a lot of my time working with two brilliant engineers, Mike Parr and Simon Minette. And we're trying to look at kind of how quickly we could deploy windmills, stick electrolyzers and then use hydrogen for storage, grab all the kind of uh, underfoot uh, uh, gas networks from people like Shell and the, you know, the, the, the people and use them just to transport hydrogen. I'm hoping to be able to maybe make Ireland a place that we could maybe do that. Yeah. So, so I keep working. Believe me, I keep working. Um, and I don't think one should stop working. It's it's what you do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually fun being an engineer and coming up with, whoa, maybe we'll do this. And how about if we, you know, so, so and, and who knows? But so, so you keep doing that and that's cool. But the other perspective is to say to yourself, you know, what would you do if you had 10 years to live? And I'm telling you, you've got 10 years to live. So do it. Kevin, do you also believe so? Or I can let that go for the other another minute for Kevin's answer, or I can stop it there. No, no, no. I say carry on. Or do you do you have different ideas? I think we will see in the very near future some madcap lunatic attempts to click to cool down the planet. There will be people plotting and scheming to do this all, 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 all around the world. And I think a distinct possibility is the surreptitious use of nuclear weapons to create a nuclear winter. I think that's a high possibility mm. of happening. But, but one more thing I would like to get back to is a name that um, John used a little while ago, David Wasdell from the Apollo Gaia project. My good friend. He, he is... Oh, look, um, give him my, my, my absolute best because Will the do. reason I want to mention, mention him is that I have a post on my website about why I think that 10C is, is baked in and it goes directly back to David's work and, and the presentation and his analysis of how all the feedback loops domino together. I'll include that in my show notes for, for this so people can go and see that. And, you know, and we're going back a long way here. We're going back 2003, 2004, when David was doing correct. this stuff, you know? Um, I woke up, I posted that on my website, and I woke up one morning to, a, you know, I get an email not, not notification of comments on the blog, and it was from Peter Wadhams. Oh, Peter Wadhams had read my blog, and he <laughs> said that he had gone into the, the, the data in detail, and he yeah. agreed. Yep, he agreed with David was there. Yes, yeah, yeah. I I used I used a lot of David's work as well in a in a large thing I wrote you know maybe three four years ago in a last desperate attempt to get our people to kind of acknowledge that you know the sort of nonsense we're talking. But again, you 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 have to. I I don't I don't I I wouldn't say empathy or sympathy, but to look at the system in wonder. I mean to think that I'm st I'm, I'm I sit back in wonder because again with with various people. Um, um, you know, we had Greta Thunberg, uh, Thunberg here in uh, Thorn. How do you say that? Greta Thunberg, whatever Greta. She she was here, and do you like we? Yes, we will do this. Yes, we will do that. Of course, we will. That's complete nonsense. Uh, actually, we'll make that the 1990 baseline. We'll exclude aviation and transport. We'll only do this. But that's taking. And I mean, you say. How can you lie to a 16-year-old girl on the verge of kind of complete crap? Well, she's not, but you know, somebody screaming at you. That uh, and and it's really it's really interesting because um, I, I I think it happens because the belief in the system becomes the the people who believe in the system don't so much believe in the system but are the system. And and uh, uh, that's that's really interesting. You find that people are not defending the system; they're actually defending their own sense of self worth. They're not. I've always been fascinated by the fact that sometimes you're at a party and somebody starts singing, and if they're a really good singer, I'm kind of 
wow. But you get people who are really jealous. Not, but, you know, she's not that good. You know, I'm, I, I could sing that well. You know, like, like where, where, where does that kind of, like, where does that come from? And how could that be accommodated? Or is it just the way we are? John, I mean, how would you speak to younger people then? How, this is also a question that I receive very frequently. Yeah. I don't have my own children, but people uh, in my age have children. And yeah. they want wonder how to inform them. They feel guilty. <laughs> well, first of all, you're in a most of us are in a great position. As I said, I've got four, and I'm the sometimes affable, sometimes really annoying, sometimes unpleasant, sometimes I'm, I'm lovable. Good with it. Just so you know, James, but feel free to carry on. Way. I'm not believed. So. Yeah, I think we've got some good material to, to build on here. Unless you wanted to play more, James. Totally up to you. No, no, no. You got to just tell in the main part of what he wanted to say. Because this is something that we have to be asking ourselves as well. Because we have to get our priorities in fucking order, really. So it's what, we're, what I'm talking about is, yes, of course, the food is the right way to go to get the momentum going to behind the collective intelligence. And it's necessary to get that going. But I think there's a, a, a far more greater urgency to get the awareness out there about the impen about the situation, the truth of it out there, like so that we get more public push for uh, SRM for M's for uh, marine cloud brightening and mirror reflection because both of them might need to be implemented. Carry on, Jimmy. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no, 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 no hurry, no hurry. Um, no, but carry on, James. Yeah, I just whenever whenever you're done, no hurry. Well. I'll put in the other link and to the other video and I just suggest that uh, everyone here should watch those videos in their own time and maybe then take into consideration what I'm saying. But what I reckon we should do is to invite the three of those people, well, the four people in, all together in the other video, the, those three people and another person, um, Jim Massa, and he's an oceanographer and, uh, you know, he's been working in the Arctic, he's retired now, but uh, he's in the other video link with them. And, um, but I think everyone here should watch those videos and what I'm proposing in order to try and get motivation behind F F MCB and everything else and get, you know, funding for it and, and whatever, you know, we need to get the public behind it. We just need to get a massive push and the only way to do that is to tell people the truth of what's happening. So I I propose we in, invite um, those four people on, the, in, on that video along with Stephen Salter and like John Doyle, Stephen Salter, Kevin Hester, Guy McPherson, Ye Tow, Peter Wadhams, Paul Beckwith, Rupert Reed, and Jim Massa. And we are, they're all the experts in the field, the different fields of the, you know, you, we'll get Stephen Salter to give us an overall picture of MCB in a, in a, in a five, 10 minute talk. We get them all prepared. They know what they're doing. They're giving an overall picture on their different fields. Uh, like, so, you know, you've John Dial from the EU that was there now from the EU foresight group. He's talk. he, he, he knows a lot about, you know, the wet bulb temperature situation and he's been warning the EU for the last number of years. He told them that, you know, you heard the hair were on the road to 10 degrees, not four degrees or three degrees or two degrees. So, um, Guy McPherson give us an overall picture on habitat. Uh, Ye to on mirror reflection, Professor Peter Wadhams on the Arctic, Paul Beckwith on the global effects of all of that, Rupert Reed on polit the politic politics and the um, the idea of focusing on fossil fuels and reduction of CO2 is not just the only idea, we need to get the rest of these ideas into the conversation. And Jim Massa talks about oceans and everything else. But the point is, there will these, these people are the only people who are the, you know, top of their field um, and they're the only people who are willing now to tell the truth on videos like these so we need to get them together give an overall picture of each of them of what they're in their different aspects of what they tell of the truth of what's happening and then for them to discuss for a few minutes of what the implications of all of that is happening so the people understand where and how and what picture we're what, what situation we're sitting in so people know the actual truth now each one of these different people have their own um youtube things and everything else out so they all have their own followers and everything else so there'll be plenty of people will watch these videos is what i'm saying but with, with this group of people grouped together and telling the truth 
and explaining what the, the, the implications of it and also then explaining talking that they all seem to be behind the idea of mere reflection and mcb and offering those as a way out along with food healers and everything else i think that would be enough once that video goes viral it will be enough to get people behind us and to get fucking um funding for mcb and everything else you know what i mean i, I think it's a hard push like that is what we need simple as that like sometimes you just need to give someone a dig in the jaw to wake them up you know what i mean and as they discussed themselves if you watch the videos they said what about the children how are they going to deal with it i think john doyle explains that one himself very well as well in saying that like you know children are we're far more resilient than we take give them uh, credit for and uh, to tell a child that maybe the world you know life might end it as they know it in 10 years time 10 years time to a 10 year old child is in a whole other lifetime they just go oh all right cool and off they go playing with the ball again you know what i mean in normal circumstances other kids will take it doesn't matter point is people need to know and know what's going on so that we can actually think about how we're going to get over and take the right pathway by listening to the people who know what they're fucking talking about sorry about the language but that's just the way i feel anyway and i'll leave it with that and i'll put in the other link there so i just urge you all to watch the two videos in your own time yeah Thanks. james real real quick i only see one link to the one that you were playing from yeah i'll put in the other one there now because like i only could get one link at a time and like click up the other video there now two seconds I'll go back up. yeah and maybe maybe repost for gabrielle both links since she just joined welcome gabrielle sister good to see you uh, michael i see you have your hand up i had put my hand up earlier but then james took that as a signal to stop talking uh, so let me just be clear for everyone what the hand up means it's simply it's just kind of like um it's it's just basically saying, hey, I'm I'm waiting to talk, but anytime, no hurry. If someone were in a hurry, they'd do just do this, you know, some just get get the speaker's attention, in this case, James. Um, but uh I mean, what's the urgency? We've got 24 hours <laughs> for the block party, and that's that's by design, by the way. Um, and James has been with us for like oh, almost two years now. Uh, wow. dialing in every Friday, Saturday from Cork, Ireland, Southeastern Ireland. Anyway, um, and what and what a treasure. Look at what James uh, just put on the table. That's a solution. So what's coming to me, um, since I had my hand up, um, but I took it down because I didn't want to get, uh, disturb James. But anyway, you all get the notion about the hands and all that. If you have any questions, just ask, okay? Or comments for that matter. Um, but imagine there's a phase one. I really love what you're saying there, uh, James, because I think that can go virally. And, and especially if it concludes with an actual solution. So let's call that phase one. Phase one is sound the alarms exactly as you identified. I'm so glad we recorded that. And in fact, I'd like to propose we do a fresh recording with you on camera, because you're a handsome lad, and you've got a great voice. And, you know, People here in the United States and around the world, everybody loves Ireland and the Irish, period. Everyone loves Ireland and the Irish. We all wish we were Irish and living there. So you, you, we, we kind of live vicariously through you. So anyway. Yeah, I wanted to ask the name of the Irish gentleman who seemed to be the host. If I could find his name, it's a lot easier for me to search something using his name than I can on all those, uh, you know, what's on uh, the chat box. So, uh, what is the gentleman's name, please? John Doyle. John Doyle. It's in the chat. Doctor, Doctor John Doyle. Oh, okay, I missed that. Okay, thank you. That's all. Oh, my yeah. other thing was just briefly, and go ahead, Jamin, real quick. But I wanted to say we have the perfect makings of a television show. We could do one hour a week. We could have a great show that could build audience to our conversations. And uh, it's a great TV show. Look at Don't Look Up is the most is the most watched a video on Netflix ever. One of the top three already. Over. Yeah. So um, beautiful. Let's definitely do that. I mean, we're recording this and we're going to publish this, right? So we have this is the beginning. And if you think in exponential terms, it's the beginning that matters. Um, now we just need to stoke it. And so we're stoking in parallel. SRM and food, 
right? And then there's sort of a, an almost like elephant in the room, invisible third pillar, which is the collective intelligence herself, right? Which is what's giving birth to all this. What James is proposing, James Desmond is uh, an implementation of collective intelligence. Oh, uh, Jim's got to go. Jim, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, and come back anytime. You yeah. Know, we're rocking yeah. every Friday. All right. We'll see you soon, Jim. Thanks so much. And really good stuff, man. Really. Thank, thanks so much for that, that awesome recap earlier and all your great thoughts. It's This is collective intelligence. This is it right here. So, um, so James, I want to respond to what you're proposing with an extremely enthusiastic yes. Um, and, you know, the TV show itself could be called the press conference. Why do you hold a press conference? To convey something important and or urgent, right? That's why you hold the press conference. So, and, and it plays well, everyone loves it. People respond very well to it. So I say we start with that and we have a, maybe a monthly press conference on, um, you know, call it countdown to extinction 2022 or something, if we have to, you know, it, listen, what sells is not blah, 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 a bunch of experts get together and share their predictions. No, no, no. We got to slap them in the face a couple of times and put on some punk rock that makes their ears split. I'm not suggesting they'll like it, right? Not a lot of people liked punk rock in the late 70s okay this isn't about winning a likability contest right um you know what's what's likable likable about seeing electric tape covering a person's nipples and sh shaving cream or whipped cream on top of that and smashing guitars and making your ears split and saying god i hope my kid doesn't get mixed up in this crowd right but it got everyone's attention we've got to go this is so 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 that's so so listen Imagine now we have door number one and door number two, right? To but they're both leading to the same place, which is called global transformation. Because let's not kid ourselves any longer that we can just do marine cloud brightening. And ah, oh, we cooled the planet and everyone lived happily ever after, except for Bambi and the koalas and the pollinators right? And the fish, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So um, we're, this is part of a larger transformation. So let's, th that's why I'm suggesting phase one culminates in marine cloud brightening. Okay. It goes from, I'm just going to call it punk rock to marine cloud brightening, right? It's kind of like, you know, chapter one of a really good book that just grabs you, right? Chapter one, right punk it starts with punk, it opens with punk rock it gets everyone's attention and it ends with marine cloud brightening as perhaps you know the lead solution and that'll be by implication i don't think we actually come right out and say hey this is the lead solution everybody get on board because then we're going to isolate 99 percent of the people who think that they've got the solution so i think we we, we present it as um you know an example an example of a promising solution, right? So we end chapter one on promise. We end it there. This is crucial. Where do we start? Where do we end? What's the narrative? It's real simple. We start with an overall, you know, cry of urgency. It could be even, even be like some cheesy ad on television where you have 10 people in a row saying, you know, buy my banana cream, buy my banana cream, buy, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, if you hear it, repetition. So let's have all of these experts say at the very end, at the very beginning, you know, that's the punk rock where everyone's jamming on every guitar string and drum and blah, 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 and smash, you know, let's smash some pumpkins and let's get everyone for freaking 10 seconds or five, five to 10 seconds. And we'll show their name underneath. Guy McPherson will be saying, you know, we have at best years left before human extinction. Um, and, you know, we're not going to last the decade. So, boom, whatever. Yay, Tao. Um, hey, you know, 
Um, I, I agree with Guy on the urgency. Good news is we have a solution. Boom, right? Then, uh, you know, the, the ice guy, right? We'll say the ice is almost gone. We've literally got months to go before we have an ice-free Arctic. The urgency is months. It's not decades, it's not years, it's months. Boom, right? Um, and then, you know, we get finally at the end, it concludes with, because we're going to be the ones putting on the video. Let's put the playlist. And so that can be an advertisement. You know, join us on January 30th, right? Um, you know, X, Y, Z is going to happen. So let's just ask everyone to send us a quick five to 10 second video segment. You can do it on your phone and email the darn video file or text it or whatever the hell, but just get it out there. Better still do it with, with good equipment. And in fact, that'll be the request, but everyone's all, it's, after two years of COVID, everyone's got a home studio or they know how to do it, right? So um, let's leverage the assets we have. That's a, that's a huge asset, the Zoomosphere and proficiency with Zoom and recordings and all that um, is a huge asset. So let's leverage it and ask the unreasonable, which is that, yes, we, we put out this badass, you know, it could be a one minute video. Boom, 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 boom. The final, join us on January, whatever, or February, whatever, right? Um, I, think that, I think the theme for today is plan it and do it right versus just, oh, well, let me send an email to this person. Oh, I got to call that person. You know, we're all just like a bunch of busybodies ramming into each other and, and, um, at Pennsylvania Station, but no one's going anywhere. And we as a whole are not going anywhere. Okay, so it's time to get punk rock, time to make it tight, put out this ad, everyone tweet about it, everyone social media eyes it, and it'll be like, wow. In fact, we can script it ourselves. Well, we, we are scripting it right now. Um, block party number 91. I'm just, I know we're recording this, but I'm also gonna be transcribing specifically Let's go ahead and build the narrative, right? Let it this start. This ad is saving. This ad is saving about three hundred billion bees, well, bumblebees, trillion. Call, call it three hundred yeah. trillion bumblebees, literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. And so um, we've we've got. Um, so we let's say we start with let's spitball it. We start with Guy McPherson, right? He talks for five to ten seconds, right? And let him just say, we've got years till human extinction unless we take um, the required actions to cool the planet, right? So it starts with a negative and then ends with a positive. And then it goes to, to Dr. Yeh of Harvard. We have, the, we have lots of options for cooling the planet. My project Mere Reflection covers them all. Something like that, boom. And then the ice guy can say, well, the urgency is not of decades or of years, but of months. We're months away from an ice-free Arctic. We got to move now. And then uh, Professor Steven Salter, we got Marine Club Brightening. Uh, and and here's, here's, just show the sailboat, you know, give the basic idea. And then everyone has it soup to nuts because we've been getting driblets and pieces and fragments. It's, it's like we all have puzzle piece of the month club where each of us every month gets an envelope in the mail with one piece to a 5,000 piece puzzle, you know, 18 years or older. Um, and we're talking with each other on the phone and describing our puzzle pieces in ways that are semi-intelligible. Let's get real, that's what's been going on. What people beckon for is synthesis and leadership and we're gonna give them both. Uh, James got, has his hand up, go for it, James. Thanks, Evan. No, I would, uh, just in those four things that you called out there, no, like if you gave it that approach and they just said, like lashed out one sentence each, we have this, you know, and then just those four examples you gave there, Professor, you know, Guy McPherson, have it. it to, to the average person, for me anyway, those, each of those sentences sounded like each one of them was contradicting the other. You know, we have this time, but we have this, or we have this, but that, you know what I mean? So to the average person, that would be, what is this? Is it? A, is it? A, you know, it's. Complex. I'd say. I'd say. Don't worry about that so much because that's actually a positive because it shows we're not all just saying, "Hey, you know, join the Jehovah's Witnesses, join the Jehovah's Witnesses, join." You know, they'll think, "What is this? The, Jeho the Jehovah's Witnesses?" Not that I have anything against them. Actually, lots of respect and lots of friends in that, um, but th that's neither here nor there. 
sorry for the, if I offend anyone, but um, there's actually no offense. They're very persistent and they have a very overt approach. And so, um, but what I'm saying is let's make it a little bit more of a talk show. Give a little drama to it. We humans, we live on drama, right? You know, one of my cars, I put gasoline in, the other diesel, right? Um, another vegetable oil, literally. So, you know, we need to know what to feed what vehicle. Heaven forbid I should, you know, put the wrong stuff in the wrong thing. You can literally kill a car that way, okay? Kill its engine. So um, the what people need right now is the punk rock wake up call and to see that some people are on the case and that they've got some real answers. And the thing is, there's nothing contradictory about what Guy McPherson says. Guy McPherson says we might have years till we're dead. You know, the ice guy says we have months to fix this, right? It's kind of like, um, you know, driving your sports car off the edge of the Grand Canyon. You have maybe 30 seconds left of life, right? beyond a certain point, right? Maybe 20 seconds of runway and then 10 seconds of free fall until you crash and die. So you got 30 seconds left to live, but maybe, you know, three quarters of a second left to act, which is to step on the brakes now before it's too late, right? Because you step on it too late, you definitely want to stop and you're definitely before the edge of the cliff, but you go James Dean over the edge of the cliff because you missed your window within which to act referring to the movie uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Well, we are rebels with a cause. The cause is saving life on earth. And step number one is cool the planet and stop the killing. Now we're going to get to there. But we start with chapter one, which we're talking about here. Again, I'll, I'll recap it. I've got a certain syntax with the transcription. Hyperlink, hyperlink, hyperlink. Okay, fresh start on the narrative. Guy McPherson says... At this point, we have years, not decades, until human extinction, unless we uh, cool the planet, uh, unless we cool the planet. And then Dr. Ye Tao says, fortunately, we have a way to cool the planet. It's called solar radiation management. My group, Mere Reflection, studies all the different forms of which there's many different uh, types and many different possible combinations. That's the good news. And then you go to the ice guy. See how it goes sweet and sour, sweet and sour? right? And this is good. Then you go to the ice guy to give you some more sour. Well, guy, thank you for telling me that James Dean has 30 seconds left to live. Um, I'm going to let you know that we, of those 30 seconds, the first three quarters of a second are our window within which we have to act. Now that's the James Dean analogy. He's going to say we have months to act. Everybody clear on that? Or is there, does anyone have any question about what I'm talking about with this whole James Dean thing? 30 seconds versus three quarters of a second. And I know okay. Michael saw Rebel Without With a With the 1-800 number flashing below. Give here. Give here. No, no, no. Ah, you're, 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 you're jumping... That was a joke. Okay, Sorry, thank, you. Joke. thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. All right. So um, back to the serious business, because we may have weeks to act ourselves in, in, in to reach our milestone in order for humanity to be able to take it the rest of the way, you know, us plus the rest of humanity to work very hard for a few months and get this problem solved, right? Um, these problems solved. So, um, I, okay, let me do a fresh start again. And let's let's hold off on the jokes until we get through, please, until we get through the narrative, because it's a very tight one. We, we got to get this down to less than a minute, right? 30 seconds would be nice, but a minute would be acceptable. More than a minute, I don't think. Um, you you want to do it in a new recording, though? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, good idea, good idea, okay. Um, 